All right, so today we're gonna to be recreating the LA-2A compressor using stock Logic plugins. And if you stay till the end, there's a bonus of recreating the LA-2A to be even better using our method than the original piece of gear itself. Hi, right, so welcome to Dinosaur Dog Studio where I am helping independent artists and producers mix like a pro. My name's Tyson, I'm a mastering engineer at Night Owl Music Group. But without any further ado, let's dive into the actual tutorial today of how to recreate the LA-2A compressor with stock Logic plugins and again, there's a bonus at the end to recreate a vocal compressor that's even better than the LA-2A using this technique. So let's dive in. And this might seem kind of weird because if you just Google it, Logic Pro has an LA-2A compressor already as a stock option. And so if you just pull up this compressor plugin, right, you can change it to this vintage opto and that says it's the LA-2A compressor. However, it's not really doing the same exact thing. And so to explain that further, if we go over to the specifications of an LA-2A, this is from Universal Audio, the actual specifications of the physical analog gear. Uh, this is the interesting part that you'll find. So that it has a very fast attack time, right? So that's, that's easy, we can dial it in. But the release time is the thing that is unique about an LA-2A. So the first 50% of the release is actually 0 0.06 seconds, which is about 60 milliseconds. Second half of the release is 0.5 to 5 seconds for complete release, depending on the amount of previous reduction. So basically somewhere in the 500 to 5,000 millisecond range is where the second half of the re release will land based on how much we're compressing with the compressor. So this is a very interesting thing because this is not what the Logic Pro version of the compressor does. It simply just acts like a normal compressor, whatever the release time is, that's what the release time will be. So what we wanna do is actually adjust and create two different compressors to recreate what the actual LA-2A compressor is actually doing. So let's go back to our vocal here. So what we wanna do first is, let's just listen to the vocal so you can kinda of get a feel for what we're dealing with here. It's not so much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. So obviously, uh, we're, we're getting there with the vocal, but it definitely needs some dynamic control to rein in some of those peaks and also bring up some of those areas that are a little less uh, loud. Pull up our first compressor, the first stage, right? So we're gonna be dialing in this very first release, this 50% first. So the very fast attack time is gonna be zero milliseconds, right? The actual specifications state that it is 10 microseconds, which is 0 0.01 milliseconds. So basically zero. The ratio is around three to one. Knee will move down to 0.5. And so now we can start dialing this in. Actually, I might bump that. I'm, I'm gonna leave that at 0.7. So now we're gonna uh, dial in our threshold and get around three decibels of gain reduction. Um, oh, I forgot to turn my auto gain off and my auto release off. So that's gonna be 60 milliseconds here. And so let's start dialing in our uh, threshold here. It's not so much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. I don't care if you say I do. It's not so much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. Okay, so that's pretty fast. I don't mind how that's working. We're getting about four to five decibels at the very, very peak. So let's, let's adjust our makeup game before we move on, just gain stage this real quick. It's not too much to... So we're hitting around like just above 18 here. So let's just match that. It's not too much to... Yeah. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Now let's go to our second compressor here. And so for this one, right, we're gonna be recreating this second stage of the release process. And so it's 0.5 to five seconds. So I'm gonna start out with that faster setting. So we're gonna start out around 500 milliseconds. And then let's start dialing this in again, three to one ratio, attack should be as fast as possible and makeup should be zero. I don't know why it happened to that one. And we'll move this threshold. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. I don't care if you say I do, no. I was already moving on, so never mind. I don't care, so never mind, never mind. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you... 
Okay, so now we've reined in all those peaks. We've brought up, again, it's sounding much more natural with this longer release. So this is effectively how you recreate an LA2A plugin. So let's listen to it in the context. So actually, before we do that, let's listen to it in solo before the compression, after the compression, and then we'll do it in the context of the mix as well. So here is without. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. Here's with. It's not too much to pretend I'm fine, no. I thought you were done with me, so never mind. All right, so here's in the context of the mix without compression. All right, and so here's with. All right, so obviously we've brought up that vocal. It's really, really uh, nice and intimate in our face. And ultimately, I probably would not have chosen, I probably would add um, either some more compression or adjust some of the parameters to get that true uh, kind of like more intimate, punchy type of compression. But, okay, so that is how you recreate the LA-2A. But in this case, I don't actually truly like the LA-2A and I actually have a little uh, bonus for you to actually make it better than an LA-2A compressor. If you're unable to get that professional sheen or quality or vibe for your songs, then I wanna let you in on a little secret. Most mixers are trying to compensate their lack of professional mixes by getting more plugins, by using more advanced tips or tricks or techniques in their mixes, or relying on buying more professional gear in order to compensate for their lack of quality mixes. But in reality, most mixers core problem is actually mixing subjectively or approaching mixing from just a creative mindset entirely. Obviously mixing is still a somewhat of a creative skill. It's actually far more objective than most people realize. Because if we think about it, everyone agrees on what a professional mix actually is. If that weren't the case, then it would be an entirely subjective field. But in reality, mixing is actually incredibly objective because everyone agrees on what a pro song sounds like. And so mixing objectively can actually help you avoid being your own worst enemy inside of your mixes and ultimately allow you to just check all of the boxes that a professional mix should check and then your mix will sound objectively professional. And so if you're mixing your own music and you're motivated to actually learn the objective skill of mixing, and if you want to ensure that your music sounds pro, then I would love to help you out by teaching you the, the five objective standards that everybody is judging your mix by and how you can use objective mixing to solve those five problems inside of your mix and then also how to do all of that in under three hours per song without pro gear, premium plugins, or utilizing templates or presets. So this is something that piques your interest, then go to theobjectivemix.com to order my brand new book, The Objective Mix. This will teach you how to mix objectively professional mixes every single time you sit down to mix. This provides you with my entire mixing workflow, along with all of the breakthrough lessons that I've learned in the last 16 years of mixing music. So if that is interesting to you at all, then again, go to theobjectivemix.com or click the link right below this video. Can't wait to see you on the inside. With that, let's get back to the video. What I like to do, especially for vocals, is back off the attack on the second compressor. So this will actually make it feel a little bit more intimate. It'll add a little bit more punch to the vocals and help them feel a little bit more natural inside of the mix. So here is with this, I might have to lower my threshold a little bit here too because of it's not capturing that initial transient here, but let's dial this in. All right, so that is how I would dial in this particular compressor. So in dialing in basically an LA-2A, but a superior LA-2A than the actual compressor using stock Logic plugins. So hopefully this is helpful. Uh, feel free to use this in your mixes to make sure that your vocals are nice and professional and also emulate one of the most famous pieces of gear in existence. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.